Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the person you meet in a grocery store in your local community one time and then forever after hope you'll meet again but never do. So it's time for the next episode of my Dishonored Let's Play, the main one, not the uh, funsies side one where I kill everybody for no reason. And uh, yeah, we're going to dive straight in, go talk to him in a second. But before I do that, I just want to mention that uh, I should be doing testing for streaming this week and then hopefully next week I will be resuming my old streaming schedule. Um, if you want to see me live stream then uh, look me up on Twitter, the link is in the description or not that difficult to find, it's at SilfCritAuto. If you go over there there will be times for the test streams and also the schedule for ordinary streaming showing up. So yeah, that's all I want to announce at the start of this one. Let's, uh, let's go. Hey Sam. I'll take you to the Golden Cat when you're ready. I've taken Lord Pendleton enough times, believe me. Oh, the closest you ever get to dissing your betters. I'll get you as close as I can to the Golden Cat, Corvo. You'll have to go the rest of the way on your own. The entrance is near Holger Square. The main thing is to make sure that little girl, Emily, Gets back all safe and sure. Them two Pendletons are there, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of guards. Slackjaw might have some ideas on helping you get inside the cat. If he don't kill you. This here's his territory. He and his Bottle Street gang hole up at the old Dunwall Whiskey Factory. They sell the elixir that folks use to fight off the plague. I'll lay low, but keep an eye out for you and the little lady you bring him back. Good luck to you. I know Emily must mean a lot to you. Be careful going up the street, Corvo. A river hand I know pulled up alongside me last night and said there's one of those watchtowers on Clavering now. Or we'll shook up the Lord Regent. Uh, it's funny you should mention that uh, Emily means a lot to me. Uh, yeah, she's very close to me. You could almost say she's like a daughter to me. Very, very, very similar to a daughter, in fact. Got any other nuggets of wisdom? Remember what I told you. If you need a man what knows the ins and outs of this city, especially the gutter side parts, you should find Slackjaw. Watch yourself, though. Okay, so that's a no then. I do actually want to see what the heart has to say about him. Samuel Beechworth went to sea to forget a hopeless love. He succeeded. That's quite sad, but also evocative. I love the um, I love how brief and uh, consistent and broad strokes these characters are. The real trick to narrative design in a game like this is by making it so clear that these characters have death, but then only hinting at it. That is that is kind of how you get away with it. You just indicate that stuff is there and then never actually detail it, because um, it makes it so clear who they are as people and you can fill in the rest of the gaps yourself. I'm having intense deja vu. Bro, you're, you're peeing on your own feet, come on. There's a lot of places where guards will piss against things. I think this is the only time when he has a perfectly acceptable place to piss. And then just pisses on his own feet quietly. Um, like, there's no way that's not where the splashback pattern is going. So there's a bunch of stuff we wanted to try and achieve here today. But what I'm going to do is basically run around doing stuff and then uh, head on. I'm not going to explore this area quite as thoroughly as we did previously. It's not necessary, we've seen it all before. Oh, nearly stuck. Uh, this is the latest in a long line of um, kind of hub areas. Oh shit. I forgot she wasn't a civilian, oh well. It's uh, the latest in a long line in hub areas in Immersive Sims. They, uh, the designers of these games really do love to create very, very detailed scenes and then return to them constantly so that they don't have to create more detailed scenes. I've got no objection to that. It leads to a, um, you know, a pleasant, pleasant sense of continuity uh, that you can see where you've been and where you're going and what's happening and how things change. Uh, this is probably the safest way back over there. Also, I should note when we were here before, we saw there was a man who had died up on that uh, bridge section. So presumably, that uh, the weeper there was in fact the woman he was waiting for. She did get there in the end, but um, far, far too late, both for her and for him. So I'm going to try and pull off a really simple but unnecessarily difficult sometimes maneuver right now, which is going to wait for this to turn around, because yes, things have got so bad in this city that 
In addition to the stupid electric death walls, they have now started building stupid electric rocket towers. Fully automated ones too. Actually, I want to, while I'm waiting for it to turn around, I might as well talk about, um, you may or may not notice a distinct design influence in this game, which uh, is very similar to that of Half-Life 2. That's because they actually share the same, like, lead visual designer. Victor Antonov has become famous in the games industry for these kind of, like, spidery metal designs that um, interpolate their way through cities, that kind of just chunk directly into cities that, you know, it looks like these things have been applied suddenly or violently to these places. Uh, that's very much his, his like, hallmark, his stock-in trade, I guess is what people say. I don't need to fight these guys, do I? I can pick that guy's pocket. The various um, posters in the game world vary based on what you do. If you um, if you use the branding option, then hey, you get posters about how Campbell has been branded. Similarly, you get these ones about dead counters. These are the ones you get if you aren't killing people. If you're killing people, there's a few different posters that show up. There's wanted posters for both the masked man if you get spotted too much, and uh, if you aren't spotted too much but you do in fact kill a ton of people, you start getting um, posters asking for information about this this horrible murderer who's been doing all these terrible things. And if you are spotted, then, um, you know, you get Corvo Atano posters as well, but you get those anyway. I wish that guy would stop saying, huh, I keep thinking I'm being spotted, but I'm not. It's just that there's like a bug with his, uh, his pathing in this area. He keeps going past something he thinks is suspicious, but it's, it's a corpse that he created. Oh shit. <gasps> oh, I'm fine. We're alright. It's okay. No one saw me. I don't have to kill anybody today. I mean, I could knock all of these guys out, but that would be... I mean, they do have money. I wonder how much money they have. You can tell how much money is in these people's pockets when you, when you knock them out. If you have a certain UI interaction turned on that I don't. Anyway, I am taking ages. Let's go. So the main thing here is that you kind of have to take that tower out. You can sprint down here, but that's not exactly subtle. Or you can uh, sneak your way past, but that tower can see you really easily. And if it does, you get in trouble. That's just a guy. It's uh, Dave Alleyway. He lives here. This is where he lives now. Ah, no, that's kind of sad, actually, because um, there's a line somewhere about how not everybody who gets... Uh, thrown out of their home because of the plague actually has the plague. Because, you know, naturally human beings are terrible. This is a dark fantasy world, which means- well, for fuck's sake. This is a dark fantasy world, which means that people are bastards to one another constantly for no reason. Surprisingly common dead people on this, uh, on this rooftop. There's no indication what killed this guy. He didn't, doesn't look like he was shot with arrows like the other guy. So you only return to this location once in the game, but that is enough to give you this sense of continuity, which I think works really well. Shit. This is disastrous. Oh god. Well, I mean... Couldn't that happen to a nicer guy? Uh, we'll find out later that these that this is what whalers look like. I believe I mentioned them previously. They're the guys who are um, one of the biggest criminal gangs in the city. They're, they're a band of assassins led by Dowd, who is in fact the guy who murdered the Empress. I, uh, I wasn't intending to kill that one, but unfortunately I got my teleport slightly wrong and jumped on his head instead of, <laughs> instead of landing behind him. They're called the whalers because they, uh, they wear the traditional outfit of... Um, people who they don't actually wear the outfit of whalers which is interesting they're called the whalers but they actually dress like whale butchers the people who work on the shore anyway uh it's important to knock these ones out because oh, that guy over there if he gets spooked he's actually a spotter and he'll summon some more they are one of the only uh, groups i think they are the only group except for one individual in the uh the base game who can do magic other than you Actually, no, there's two, because there's Granny Rags, as we 
may or may not already know, but definitely suspect, and uh, an executioner who shows up later on. Turn up. Actually, fuck it. Why am I waiting? Oop. I couldn't be bothered for, you know. Right, so. Now that we have um, easily disarmed and non lethally taken down all of these guys, definitely every single one of them is non lethally dealt with, we can uh, hurry on. Hey, Griff. You don't mind me uh, picking your pocket, right? Since you gouged the fuck out of me. Constantly. Want to look at some of the things I've found? Good prices, I swear. He's the angriest looking man I've ever seen. Well, apparently I'm incredibly poor, who knew? I do need more sleep darts, though. So, what I'm going to do, actually, is run off and visit... Um... Local crime boss extraordinaire Slackjaw after robbing his men blind, because why not? What a mess, huh? Or Whole town's not. Gone to trash. Sometimes it defaults to interaction yeah, instead of yeah, to uh, he's the, one. the other thing. Hey, we got a message for you from I don't Slack care. Uh, I'm not going to listen to all of these people talk because they just bore me with their long stories. It's just, it's God. It's like, you know how you love your grandparents, but they will just tell you a story that lasts six hours? Yeah. Um, it turns out criminals in this game are like that too. I say criminals, kind of everybody's a criminal because the way that the law works is that, uh, you know, things are criminalized and if you do a crim if you do a crime then you are a criminal, even if your crime is in fact ethically not a problem at all and doesn't inconvenience anyone. This is why the world is the way it is, because of these complicated interactions of problems and systems. You do have to be careful here though, because these will explode. Um, if an NPC trips over something explosive, it has a high chance of exploding because of the physics interactions involved. Hey, blow off, chopper. Which means you can do stuff like put explosive barrels in front of people, knowing that they'll run into them and trip over them and explode. But we're trying to avoid people dying, regardless of whether it's our own fault or not. Because um, all deaths ultimately contribute to the... Oh, I want that. Where can I find a distillery reserve key? Probably inside. Maybe just leave their, you know, horrible weapons lying around. I can't remember if I mentioned this previously, but I don't easy, understand easy. why, uh... You just need a bit. Ain't you heard? Slackjaw keeps the good stuff for himself. Rest of us get one part elixir, three parts water down. Oh, that's just to make the swallowing go smooth. Well, I ain't taking no chances on getting the plague. Drink till you drop, that's my motto. What the hell was I saying before these guys interrupted me? I I do not remember. But I do remember that there's lots of loot in here. So time to rob them blind again. Although this time with it not being an issue that they see me. So, uh God, what was I talking about? I don't remember. Oh no, the police. Like, um, it's clear that people know that this is, like, the Bottle Street Gang are one of the biggest criminal syndicates in the city, and they do all kinds of, um, thefts and murders and muggings and so on. A bunch of the common people don't like them because they, they will mug you. A bunch of the common people like them because they also sell much cheaper versions of the, uh, the elixir that stops you catching the plague, as those guys have just mentioned. That's just a hint about who we should rob. Um... But the, uh, you know, the fact that they provide this valuable public service is, uh, like, they stole they stole the apparatus to make this stuff and were like, hey, if we run it, we can make lots of money. But, um, you know, one third protection from the plague is better than no protection from the plague, so people, you know, people who can't afford the real stuff will still buy it. So, really, um, you know, they could get some of that uh, public goodwill that you get you hear about in like stories of turn of the century criminal gangs taking actual care of their local communities and stuff rather than just being price gouging bastards and so on. Um, I'm saying bastards a lot. I don't know why it's slipped into my vocabulary from somewhere. You don't mind if I take this shit, right? This is you don't you don't care. This is fine. Um, there's no actual ownership rules in the game. Everything is, is ownerless, so no one cares if you take shit that belongs to them. 
they will notice if something near them disappears and they don't know you're there, and then if you're in a hostile area, they will become hostile to you. However, you can just steal shit that belongs to you right in front of their face and they won't care, will you? Those things will kill you, you know. Oh, that... <laughs> That's extremely rude. I don't know why I expected people to be nice in this area, area but uh, yeah, you'd think... Um, they could get so much, like, public goodwill, you know? Do you not want the police to tell... to know where you are? Well, then you need the common people to not be telling them. My men were right. You do look like a man out for murder. <coughs> Way I figure it, there ain't nobody worth killing round here except those two Pendletons over at the Golden Cat. I'm right, ain't I? See? Slack your nose. Them boys are twins. Rich, mean, and weird. Worse than most of their ilk. They've been laying low there a while, not sure why. There's a lot of security at the Golden Cap tonight, though. Special guests and the like. But you're gonna walk in there dressed like that and kill the Pendleton brothers? Maybe I got a better way to take care of them, too. If you're doing something for me first, understand? Someone. I don't know who is killing my men, taking my territory, stealing my goods. Might be a fellow name of Galvani. I sent my best man to investigate, but he went missing and... Well, now I need someone to find what happened to him. Go to this Galvani's place. He lives nearby off Clavering Boulevard. You do that for me and I'll get your better way into the Golden Cat. So, I have some problems what with this. By the way, here's a nice little detail. That's me in the poster. Pretty good likeness. He only says that if you actually do go have a look at it. Let's see what the heart has to say. There, there is a strong drink made, made here. here. I tried, I tried it once. once. Distilled, Distilled from river crusts by the taste, taste of it. No, not that. Him, please. Slack, Slack jaw. jaw. Horus raised him. him. He'll, He'll never know his father was a prince. prince. He deals, he deals in flesh, flesh weapons, strong drink. They've, they've always called him Slackjaw. I think that canonically, um, his father was a prince of Tivia or something, but he grew up here in Dunwall, so he has no idea. I think he's a, an orphan, maybe. A lot of them around in this place. Anyway, he suspects that someone has been killing his uh, men, trying to muscle in on his territory. Why he thinks it's Galvani is a total mystery. It's completely unexplained. How he doesn't know that, you know, local um, notable doctor who's genuinely quite famous in the city at this point, Galva uh, Luigi Galvani is... Like, why does he think it's that guy? You know, why doesn't he suspect the much more likely, uh, much more likely culprit of local octogenarian Granny Rags, <laughs> who is who it will turn out to be? Got anything to smoke or eat? Huh. Anyway, um, there's not much point scouring every single inch of this location because we've already been through this place. You know, everything is, um, the rooms and so on are all the same, but, uh, the items do respawn and there are some areas blocked off now. Is there somewhere I'm forgetting? Two more charms around. One is down and one's a little bit up. I think I know where one of them is. Um, let's not go over there just yet. I checked out that room, I checked out that room. So, I'm going to go to head, uh, go, go ahead to Galvani's lab. He was, he was in prison, prison for five years, years. then he changed, changed his name to Griff. No one, one suspects. That's because no one would ever willingly choose the name Griff, it's not that, uh, not that complex. So, uh, you may or may not remember, we noticed the, uh, a mandatory whale oil ration is now in mm. effect. Non-compliance is I feel like I should knock these guys offense. out, but I'm not gonna just yet. What was I saying? Um, yeah, you may or may not have noticed on our first run through this area that this, the uh, art dealer's apartment, is in fact accessible. It's um, it's not in the previous mission. It is in this mission. This is this is how you get in there. I do not want that man to spot me. Fortunately. I have just such a tool. Well, that was, uh... I mean, I'm glad he didn't die. 
I was ready to pitch over the edge for a second. Oh, he looks so precarious. Seen anybody with signs of the sickness? You always amuse me. So the guard dialogue is one of the delightful things about Dishonored. Ha I think... <laughs> look, is, did his helmet land on the rail or was he already like that? That's kind of funny. Um, there's quite a few of the things that the guards say, which they, they have this slightly um, randomised dialogue pattern where a guard will pick one of the openings and one of the other guards will pick a response. They don't necessarily tally up and there's only about five or six of each in the whole game. So you hear a lot of repeated guard chatter, but this is where um, the beloved phrase, uh, shall we gather for whiskey and cigars? Yes, I believe so, uh, comes from. It's kind of a, a meme in fans of Dishonored because it's like, they say it so much. There's a lot of a lot of it around. There's also a lot of uh, people getting their own squads after last night, although the events of last night are never detailed. Yo. What do you think? I think he's dead, right? I know that. I mean, do we have suspects? Suspects? What? Suspects? We ain't gonna waste time solving who killed him. Personally, I'd buy who did it a drink. But what are you gonna put on your report? I'm gonna say we found one of Slackjaw's men inside, all dead and bloody, and that you are a stinking idiot. Puh. Solutions? Clues? Suspects? What do you think we are? We're the police. It's not our job to solve crimes. It's our job to protect capital. I, hmm, actually, I wonder how much politics I should actually inject into my conversations Indeed, about this stuff, I because so. I just say whatever pops into my gay little head, but that isn't necessarily a conversation I want to have while I'm playing video games. Although video games, of course, are inherently political, and anyone who argues that they aren't is, um, either an idiot of the kind I constantly rail against whenever I'm talking about people's inability to understand themes and uh, metaphors in narratives, but also quite possibly just trying to lie to you. You know, games are art, and if they are, you know, these people are very insistent that games are art, but they also want games not to be judged as art, you know, something that can influence the mind or encourage people to think one way or another, or even just help you understand huh? things. Oh, fuck. Oh boy, oh buddy, oh my god, you have no idea how lucky you are. Ho ho holy shit, that was close. Uh, I don't need to drink that. Very neatly tucked into the corner. You, you're so fucking lucky. You're so lucky that I got all my killing out of my system yesterday. Uh, yeah, so there's not actually a ton to grab here in Galvani's uh, offices. He has, um... You know what? I'm just gonna put him in there too. So many guards on the streets that aren't wearing their masks, and here we are, a guy in the house of a doctor who's working with the plague. So yeah, there are, you know, plague rats around. Um, you know, it's always good to tidy up whenever you visit someone's house. It's just polite, really. Like, I think if you're if you're visiting your friend's house, you should... Like, don't make a thing of it, just do some dishes or something, like, just to show you care about them. Um, and that you're aware that your existence in their home is adding to the, the entropy of their existence, you know? Someone cooks you dinner, you do their dishes. That's just, um, you know, common decency, really. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else even in the house to steal. I don't think the, the safe definitely doesn't refill and there's nothing else lying around. I'm not sure there's even any people on the second floor. Well, I guess we're about to find out. I should, I really should actually get into the habit of carrying my crossbow in hand because I think there's like two, there's like two pouches downstairs and some guys standing around, but there's nothing else to take. So, yep, this is uh, Galvani Redux. As I was saying before, these uh, immersive sims as a rule love to, oh, I forgot to switch off. I thought for sure I switched off the steam overlay. That's going to get on my nerves. Um, but yeah, so the... God, what was I saying? Immersive Sims. Uh, they love to bring you back to the same locations and have slight changes. Is that... Did I leave that? I'm pretty sure I left that lot there last time. I did not know that things like that were preserved. They aren't usually. Anyway, time to go before I get caught sneaking around again. There's a lot of illogic in this, but um, wait... 
yeah, Immersive Sims likes to take you back to show you so that you get a, a sense of continuity and understanding of the way these places, you know, sort of remain as they are in between different instances of time. That was a weird way to phrase what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Next time we're going to go talk to Slackjaw and talk about the logic of this whole this whole situation because it's super dumb and it doesn't make any sense. Uh, there are a lot of weirdly plot holy elements to the sort of side questy bits of this game, and then we'll head on over there to the Golden Cat, which is not this object, despite the fact that I made it look like it was. And the street is crawling with these guys, huh? It's almost like I did a huge heist here the last time I went through. Anyway, that's all from me. Uh, catch you later. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.